the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to episode 207 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Bexon. Today, we're going to be talking with Travis Comstock of Remax Oceanside Realty in Hako, uh, who joined Remax here in Costa Rica last year. Before that, run a residential property investment firm, but primarily, primarily worked in the medical device industry in Chicago for over 12 years. So today, we're going to be getting his uh, viewpoint and also advice as a recently moved investor and real estate consultant to Costa Rica, uh, and just kind of talking about all things you know, Costa Rica and getting kind of more of a fresh look for someone that's only kind of, I would say, just arrived in Costa Rica, even though they've been here uh, kind of like uh, a year. But I think it's always good to kind of get that viewpoint uh, as it can be very different from those uh, long timers uh, like myself and other people that we've had here on the podcast. Remember, guys, if you're looking to make an investment here in Costa Rica and want some guidance, uh, we have quite a bit of data. You can get a free 15-minute consultation with us. You can just click in the description down below or go to our website, investingcostarica.com. That's investingcostarica.com. Uh, and you can just book a call in the, in the header there in the main menu. Um, we've also got a curated investment section where we've taken listings from other people and actually done an analysis on them and kind of given them a grade like Moody's. So uh, you can just take a look at that. It's all free. You can just sign up there, guys. Uh, and if there's a property you want us to analyze as well, you can email us info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. But let's get straight into the podcast. Good afternoon, Travis. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you, Richard? Thanks for having me on. Not at all. I know that you've been a long time listener of the podcast, so it's always good to get people that have uh, supported the podcast since we've started on. on. I've been listening for years, and as you're probably well aware, I definitely used up my 15 minutes of free consultation, so I appreciate it. Not at all, <laughs> not at all, anytime. Well, I mean, you've been down here in Costa Rica now, how long? Uh, since October of last year, so going okay. on nine months now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I always think it's great to get a viewpoint of someone that's kind of a, a recent transplant, as they say, and not ask people that have been jarred by 20 years of being here in Costa Rica. Yeah. Um, but I mean, look, I think markets have, you know, stock markets have had a pretty good start to 2024. It's not been amazing compared to previous years, but I think worldwide real estate is kind of slowing down with, you know, the interest rates. I mean, what are you seeing happening here in Costa Rican real estate, Travis? I mean, I think I've heard you say it several times. It's going to be interesting to see what 2024 brings at the end of the year to kind of gauge where we're at since COVID happened, since we're out of COVID. Um, like what I'm seeing and what I'm asking around with the other agents I work with, it seems to be going good. It's not, you know, gangbusters like it was COVID. But as you know, COVID was absolutely crazy, crazy here. I mean, it was... Offers coming in, sight unseen, over asking price, you're not seeing that anymore. I think what you're seeing is still people buying, people selling, but I think you're seeing more realistic asking of prices. I think you're getting more realistic offers. I think things are sitting on the market a little bit longer, but I do think things are moving. So it'll be interesting to see where we end the year and kind of what we can forecast at the end of this year moving, moving forward. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think there are some markets that are doing, still doing very well. I mean, land in Playa Grande, you know, is just, I've just, we've just recently made an offer for a club, actually two offers for two different clients on land there. And it's just, there's just not much available, but I know there are other markets where, you know, I think that there is, you know, more of price settling, should I say, um, you know, especially like areas like Mammon Antonio. And I think the areas that have like not the main core areas so like for you guys could be somewhere like Playa Hermosa, Bahuco, or somewhere like that. Exactly that's exactly it I think I think we're starting to see a lot of movement which I know we'll talk about in Hako and where is that spill out going I think it's the surrounding areas of Hako just like you mentioned. Yeah yeah so I mean again, and I think with the go ahead no no keep going Travis. No and it's it's interesting because like when we look at the worldwide events and what's happening post-COVID um I was lucky enough or maybe smart enough to buy a lake house in the States 2016. Thank God I did. I'd never be able to afford it now after COVID. But yep. even what I'm seeing there is kind of what we're seeing similar to here. You're starting to see houses sit a little bit longer. They're still selling, but it's not this asking price that's way inflated. It's not multiple offers coming in. So it just reminds me of that. I think, you know, with, with the lake house here, with beachfront property here, it's a matter of time. You're going to get that long-term appreciation, you know, if it's bought in the right place and you're sitting on it for a long enough period of time. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, you mentioned that you've been in Costa Rica nine months now. I mean, what has been a pleasant surprise for you? And also what has been a bit of a shock? <laughs> 
let's start with the shock. And what's funny is I've had, you know, with your help being a resource with other podcasts, I feel like I've had so much time to say, okay, this is what it's going to be like when we move to Costa Rica. This is what we got to prepare for. This is how I'm going to respond when I'm at the bank for six hours. But until you're actually here living in it, it's hard to know how you're going to feel, how you're going to respond. But I'll give an example. So, uh, <laughs> So when I got here, um, we, I work with a, a, a lady. She's kind of the actor in Shawshank Redemption Red. She's kind of the person that gets things done. So I took her to the bank with me, mainly so she could translate for me, have all my documentation, all my paperwork. We went early in the morning. We were there about four hours. Um, at the end of the four hours, congratulations, Mr. Comstock. You are now part of our banking system. We need you to come back next week. We're going to give you your ATM card. One will be for Clone, so the other will be for USD. We'll show you how to log in into your account. It's very neat. So I'm awesome. Great. Well, I'll see you guys next week. So I go back. I'm like, hey, you know, I'll wait in line again. I'm, I'm here to pick up my cards. Oh, well, shoot. Those are actually in San Jose. They didn't get delivered here. No problem. What do you guys want me to do? Come back next week. We'll have them next week. So same thing. I go back the next week. Uh, they're not in San Jose, but they're not here. After the third time going back and they're not they're not in San Jose, they're not in Hako. Um, I go back to the States because I do exhibit at medical conferences, kind of like what I used to do. And I get an email from them. Travis, guess what? We found your cards. Everything is good. I emailed them back. Thank you so much. That's great. I appreciate the effort. I'm actually away out of the country until next week, but I'm going to come in at Wednesday at nine o'clock. Perfect. Show them this email, the guards. You won't have to wait in line. So, okay, great. So I get back. It's Tuesday afternoon. I send them an email. Hey, just confirming tomorrow that I'm coming in at nine or whatever, 10 to pick up the cards. Oh, actually, we have a problem. We destroyed your cards about three days ago because they were here for too long. So <laughs> I am still dealing with it right now, but that's one yeah. of those unpleasant surprises. And I've, I've heard you talk about it a lot. It's a lot of bureaucracy. It's a lot of not knowing how to get things done or just the time that it takes to get something done can be a lot longer than, you know, what we're used to or what I'm used to in the States. Um, and what's the other example? Yeah, the, the other funny one is we have an ATV that we, that we got. We, we love it. It's one of the side-by-side -side buggies. Yep. And um, it's got the decal in the front. It's, just, it's a front license plate, but it's just a sticker. Well, after years and years and years of humidity, sand, rust, you can barely see it. So I had to take it for an inspection. So I had a local mechanic come over because he was going to drive it to Punta Rentas to take it through Decra to get it inspected. Yep. And he sees it and he's like, uh, this isn't going to fly. Like, you can't go in with this plate. You can't even read the number. So it's like, all right, well, what do we do? And he's like, it's going to take time. Like, this is a process. It's going to take you so much time to get this that, you know, you can't pass unless you get this plate and it could be two to three months. And you don't want to be caught driving this without the correct, you know, inspection sticker. So I'm like, oh, what do we do? You know, this kind of sucks. Just got the thing. We want to use it. And it was like, well, I know a girl in San Jose for 350 bucks. She can go talk to this person, talk to this person. It can be here in two days. So I didn't want to go that route, but we went that route. And sure, sure enough, we got it pretty quick. So I would say to answer your question, the bureaucracy, the 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 slowness of everything, you know, the, the laid back lifestyle, which is great to some degree. But when you're impatient and you're coming here and you're not really used to it yet, it can be, uh, can be a little deterring. That's where I think that, again, it becomes about your network here in Costa Rica, you know, about getting stuff done. So, yeah, 100 percent. It's it's a, I exaggerate when I say this, but now I'll call like an accountant that I know. It's like, dude, I'm going to the ATM. Can you come with me? He's like, I don't think you need me to come with you. But <laughs> so, but no, I've learned grow your team, grow your old X, find out who you work well with and, you know, leverage each other to get things done. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, Travis, I mean, if you don't want me asking, why did you choose like real estate consulting in Hako of all places in Costa Rica? Yeah. So uh, Hako, we kind of found, you know, by mistake, if you will, uh, yep. just kind of traveling from North to South, decided to stop in this little beach town, uh, party town. It kind of gets a bad rep, as you know, uh, yep. I am here to defend it a little bit and say, it's not for everyone. It depends what you're looking for and where you're coming from. Coming from Chicago for us, the stuff that we see on the streets here that aren't normal to people, it's not a big deal to us. We're kind of used to, yep. you know, seeing a little bit of everything. So Hako to us, it, it's a phenomenal place. Uh, there is just so much to do outside of Hako if Hako is not your jam. We kind of use it as a city. I know it's a beach town, very condensed beach town. But for us, it's kind of a city. It's a main hub, but it's so easy to get out of it. It's easy to go up into the mountains. It's easy to go to Estorias where there's no one on the beach. It's easy. You know, it's so close to everything, including San Jose, which you will absolutely have to go to San Jose to get things. And yeah. it's an hour and a half from the airport. So it's in a great spot. 
uh, we kind of use it as an anchor as well. Like within a day, we can go Arnold, we can go Guanacaste, we can go south to Evita, um, you know, maybe just spend the night and come back the next day. So it's much easier to do that living in the central coast than it would be, you know, Guanacaste trying to come south and vice versa. Um, also kind of what attracted us to Hako and selling here would be the fact that you can get title beachfront property um, sitting right on the ocean. As you know, most of Costa Rica, that's not the case. It's a concession sale, basically, at least from the government. So here in Hako, there is uh, the exemption from concession sale. And I think that really helps with a lot of people who don't want to hear about concession sale, or they just don't quite understand it, or they don't quite trust. What do you mean I have to form a corporation where I'm 49% owner? So um, that is uh, one of the advantages, I think, to Hako. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, so that's primarily why we chose Hako and, um, you know, for both personally and for business purposes. Cool. You know, when foreigners look to invest in Costa Rica, quite a, a lot of them do. You know, what are some of the surprises that you think that they should be aware of? I would say a good surprise that I get a lot of feedback on. Hey, Travis, this wasn't much different from a purchase I just made in the United States. It was very simple. Like I was, I was amazed. A lot of people are, are, are amazed with how you have the same property ownership rights if you're a foreigner as if you're a national. So I think those are good surprises to people. Um, some of the bad, I would say, surprises is the lack of, I guess, I guess financing or as yeah. you know, you can get financing. It's just harder. You know, you're, you're, you're going to pay more. It's a longer process. It's not a fun process. There are ways to get lending outside of Costa Rica banks. So, you know, I know some of those people I can connect some of my clients to, but predominantly it's a cash market. So then you've got to kind of help people come up with ways to find the cash. If you don't have it, maybe there's a rental property in the States that you can sell to liquidate. And I see a lot of people doing that. The obvious answer would be a home equity line of credit from a property that someone owns in the States. They bring that down. They can use that money to make their purchase here in Costa Rica. Um, another surprise, I think, and um, it, it's a big one, is the property tax here. Um, yeah. You know, in Chicago, I think we were paying close to eleven, twelve thousand dollars for a two-bedroom, two-bath condo. Here, it's 0.25 percent of the appraised value. So normally, four hundred thousand dollars is thousand dollars a year. So I think people can't wrap their mind around that. And I yeah. think that's one of the advantages to investing in Costa Rica is the low, ultimately the low holding cost with such a low tax structure. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the things that comes to me is just closing costs, you know, where people are like between four to five percent. They're not used to that, like, you know, lawyers fees being a percentage of, you know, the taxes. I think they understand and the transfer tax, but typically I don't think they're used to paying such high closing costs. I, I think you're right. I think there's a trade off there of a little bit higher closing costs with certainly <laughs> less taxes. Absolutely. And here, it's, um, you know, as you know, it's very attorney driven. You need the attorney to do everything to do the due diligence in the states. It's not so much like that. In some states, it is like Illinois, for example, very, very similar. But um, yeah, there are a lot of when you look at a closing statement here, there's a lot of line itemized uh, charges like what's what's that? What's, yep. <laughs> stamp stamp fee. Come on. Yep, exactly. I mean, look, I've spoken in Hacko before because we've had David Carr from Coldwell Bankers, uh, you know, on here. There's a lot of new apartments coming online in Hacko. You know, I mean, maybe even a doubling of inventory over the next three to four years. You know, that I mean, what's that going to what impact is that going to have on an investment as a vacation rental? Because I don't know whether there's demand for double the amount of you know inventory coming online. You know, and that's kind of a, obviously it's a, a talking point right now. And I, we just had a monthly newsletter that I put out that kind of addressed this issue. And I think it is scaring some people saying, well, where's yep. the demand going to come from? You know, looking at tourists, are there going to be more and more and more people every year coming? So I think what we're seeing in Hako is already the buildings that are off of the beach where developers can get them a lot cheaper and build. But now we're starting to hear of project one, project two, project three happening on the beach. So yeah. a lot of people that come down here are saying, okay, I want a, as you say, a lifestyle investment where I can use it myself. I, I don't want to lose money, but I want to make a, enough to, you know, cover my nut. So basically I think people are a little bit nervous with the occupancy rate, you know, is that going to go down? So I, I, in the newsletter, we address that basically if, if you have an Airbnb property, you're just going to have to tighten it up a little bit. If that means better pictures, maybe a unique offering you can give guests, maybe yeah. a concierge service that comes with it, better photos. I mean, better competitive pricing. 
Uh, the one thing I'm starting to see quite a bit is the shift, though, from a short-term rental market to a long-term rental market. And it kind of makes sense with what I'm seeing, too. Like, you know, with the 180-day extension on the travel visa, more people can come down here for a longer period of time. A lot of the clients I work with right now are at the point of their lives where they're either remote workers, digital nomads, or they're re nearing retirement, and they want to figure out a way to do six months here, six months there. So with that being said, I know I'm on a thread of tons of realtors that are always looking for a long longer term units. So I think some of the short term people are shifting to the long term and finding that's less of a headache and yeah. maybe at the end of the day, the same amount of money. Um, yeah, I mean, and also, I think the last thing I'll, I'll add is just the opportunity that comes with it. So what we have is a lot of condos here that are built 2004, 2005, 2006. And guess what? Those are so outdated now. So I think there is opportunity for renovation and construction. So on some of the recent deals I've had, it's like the property got low enough because it wasn't getting enough looks. So someone got it, what they thought was a cheap you know, amount. They put a little bit into it and voila, you know, there's equity there. So I do think there is an opportunity to kind of renovate some of the older things that haven't been touched. I love a good renovation, man. Um, you know, if you get a good <laughs> right price, yeah, it can work very well. Yeah. I mean, I think that, look, what's going to happen here is the demand in high season is so high anyway. So it's never, you know, there's always going to be demand. I think what's we're going to start to see is the high season is still going to be high, but then in those more competitive periods, you might see a run on lower rates, you know, and that I think you're just going to see this, you know, higher highs and lower lows, you know. So, yep, exactly. Yeah. But I still think there's well, enough on the bone. I do too. And honestly, I think it depends on who's buying it and what they want to use it for. A lot of the conversations I'm having are, like I said, people are willing to find something that they want, whether it's modern, whether it's Tico style. And, you know, once they find what they want, it's for them. And then what they get from renting it is just, it's great. But they're looking for their own personal place to be in Costa Rica and then renting it is secondary. Yeah. Well, I mean, the interesting thing about Hacko is it has a strong local market as well, which a lot of locations don't have. I mean, you know, I, I've been in this industry for 20 years and just seeing the amount of Costa Ricans that go to Hacko because it's the closest kind of like decent beach town from San Jose. It is on a Saturday morning. It is crazy here. And it's great to see. I mean, it's it's and that's a, a good thing to know, depending on what your model is for renting, is you have a Central Valley there with over a million people that do come to Hako on the weekends. Absolutely. And I think it gives it a cool like local flair. You know, of course, there's a lot of expats here. And I think that's becoming everywhere in Costa Rica. But definitely we feel like in Hako, you get much more of a kind of a, a local local flair, if you will. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I always like to, you know, kind of get people's opinion on kind of the next beach town to develop. I mean, Hako is a city. I mean, it's classified as a city, hence why it has yep. all the towers on it. But yep. what are the markets around Hako that you think will develop the most in the next five years? I think it's going to push south. I really do. And I think it's going to push up. Um, I have clients in town just yesterday and we were in Hermosa, Hako, up in the hills, the mountains. And it's yep. just amazing to see over the last nine months since I've been here, just the amount of large equipment up there, moving dirt, it's a, the amount of for sale signs, the amount of sold signs. So I feel like, you know, as there's no more opportunity on the beach anymore, because everything's bought up that a lot of people will experience when they come here, going up in the mountains, whether it's a tour and they absolutely love it. So, you know, up there, cooler temperatures, you get expansive views of the Pacific ocean. So I think areas like that are going to do well. And then, as you said, like areas like Estorias, all the way down to Capos, really. I mean, with the Marina going there, it's, I think the whole area between Hako and Capos just has potential to really explode. And I think the more the Hako explodes, the more it's going to fall out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, my last question for you, Travis, I've kept you long enough. If you inherited $500,000 and had to invest it into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you invest it in and why? You know, it's funny because um, I have this ringing in my ear. I'm sorry. It's funny uh, you asked that because I, I know you were going to ask that. So I kind of been prepared. Like, what, what, what should I say? And my cousin was just here yesterday. He and his family, they were here for a whole week. They stayed at Los Suenos. We had a great time. They absolutely love that place. And he drove yesterday from Los Suenos to San Jose Airport. Yep. I didn't talk to him. I didn't talk to him at all about how the drive was. Um, but I got a text from him that basically said, hey, dude, I'm going to start a bicycle reflector company in Costa Rica. I'm going to save lives and make millions. So I can only imagine what his drive was like and how probably <laughs> some of the things that he saw. But no, I thought that was a, a, a pretty funny thing because, you know, driving at night, it is hard to see a lot of the bikes out there. Yes. For me, per, for me personally, um, you, 
real estate wise, I think you can't go wrong on if it's bought, you know, oceanfront. I think ocean always prevails. I think people come here on vacation for the ocean. I do think as I spend more time up in Beaqual and some of the mountain towns, um, it would be so cool to see more like a Airbnb community or someone do somewhat of a, a project where you're attracting people because the ocean's right here, but you have this 15 minute drive up this beautiful mountain. And I honestly think it's maybe the first person that comes down to figuring out transportation, whether that unique rental comes with a side-by-side -side with an ATV, a driver or insurance waivers that they can drive it. But I do think the first person to figure out kind of how to have transportation up there. So it's convenient, but you're also taking advantage of everything on the coast. Um, best of both worlds, honestly. Cool. Well, Travis, this has been great to get you on here and share your experience and just your viewpoint as a, uh, I would say, a somewhat newbie here in Costa Rica, which is always good to good to get that viewpoint. Because again, our perspective is very different for a lot of us that have been here for a long time. No, 100%. And I thank you for being a resource to me over the years. And honestly, as you say, I pass the pod quite a bit because I, uh, it, it's funny, I'll talk to people and they'll be like, hey, what do you know about construction of VTEL? Like, well, what I do know is from this podcast I heard and I've sent it to them and everyone gets back and says, man, that's great. Thanks for turning me on to this. Just last week, I sent your podcast to someone who was wanting information on digging for wells, and I found the I found a good episode you did. And he got back to me like three hours later. He's like, "Dude, I'm on episode number five. I'm I'm binging it." So, <laughs> well, I appreciate the support, buddy. <laughs> no problem. I appreciate you having me on. It's been it's been great. Not at all. Not at all. Well, Travis, again, thanks very much. Anyone that wants to contact you, I'll put all of your contact details down in the description. But appreciate you taking the time to join us on the podcast. Thank you, Richard. Hope no to talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that podcast there with Travis. As I said, I think it's always important to get a viewpoint of someone that's recently moved here to Costa Rica, um, but someone that has been in the you know investment industry before and you know just getting, again, you know the, all the quirks here in Costa Rica. I mean, I think investing here is very different than living here as well. Um, and I think for anyone that's done any, anything in Costa Rica, you will understand of just like how difficult it can be for sometimes and just having a great team is so important. But Anyway, guys, um, I appreciate the uh, support that everyone's been giving us. If you, again, if you uh, would like to support the pod, you can kind of pass it on. Uh, give us a great review. I very much love to hear from people. You can email us info at investingcostarica.com. We're very happy to talk to anyone, myself or the guys in the office. Um, actually, I'm going to be, when I suppose when this goes live, coming back from Europe. Uh, I'm spending uh, about a month in Europe. But, uh, but yeah, I just want to say thanks very much for everyone for their support. And uh, I'll keep this going. And uh, we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica.